Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our next Milestone Project X webinar. In these webinars, we want to make sure that you stay up to date with the latest features and that you're getting the most out of your Milestone system. So today we'll be focusing on reviewing and discussing the latest updates to Milestone systems and what you can expect from the Milestone R3 release. Don't feel like you need to make notes or take it all in straight away, as we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar later today. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A box at the side at any time. There will also be a dedicated spot for this at the end. I'm joined today by Ben Nelson and Sean Mottram from Milestone. So I'll now just hand you over to Ben. Thanks, Craig. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, and thank you to Craig and the Bedrock team for inviting us along to join you all today. Uh, thank you also for everybody that's taken some time out of your day to join us. Um, as Craig uh, introduced me earlier, my name's Ben Nelson. I'm the Channel Business Manager at Milestone Systems. I'm also joined by my colleague, Sean Mottram, who's one of our solution engineers. It's difficult to present content relevant to all the people on the webinar today. Uh, some people may be familiar with Xprotect and for some this might be the first time. Uh, please feel free to ask questions at the end. Um, as Craig suggested, there's the, also the chat, the chat box, and hopefully we'll get some time to go through those at the end. So uh, moving on, just look at the agenda for today. Um, I'm just going to talk to you all uh, about um, operational excellence. This has been a focus area for us uh, the past couple of years and is reflected in the developments that have gone into Xprotect software in um, 2023 and 2023. I'll then move on and talk a little bit about um, cybersecurity and compliance, um, another important topic in today's world. Um, it will just re-emphasise the global standards um, Milestone Xprotect meets and how we can ensure compliance within the architecture. Uh, we can also uh, touch on um, potentially some new legislation that may be coming in next year um, as well. Um, I'll then give you a little bit of a, some updates around the open platform. This includes our MIT VMS API, um, which allows our technology community and application developers, developers to integrate into Xprotect. I'll then hand over to Sean, um, and who can do a deep dive into uh, from a technical perspective and provide a live demonstration of the video restrictions feature, something I feel that will be uh, very beneficial for police operations. So operational excellence. As you may be aware, Milestone release three versions of Xprotect software every year. On each release, we offer new features, updates and operator enhancements to ensure that we're able to take advantage of all the new technology that enters the market. A valid and up-to-date care packages entitles you to all of the updates as they're released in addition to the other benefits that care packages bring. In the last couple of years, we've made some key enhancements to the operator experience based on valuable feedback from our partners and end users. Uh, this we feel is very important because we understand the daily challenges of operating a VMS system. Uh, for example, from a user perspective, the following challenges can be a daily struggle. So distraction from all of the alarm notifications, uh, risk of neglecting, vital alarms, prolonged response time, uh, and also not fully dedicated operators um, that that potentially have many areas of responsibility. So it's not like you can sort of be on this every day um, and, and know where everything is. So yeah, we've uh, sort of looked at those areas. Um, um, so if we refer to the graphic on the screen, um, Please note the graphic identifies some of the key features, but there are in fact more than this. Um, if you want to see the full details, you can review the care over time and Xprotect comparison charts, which are resources available on our website. I've just sort of cherry picked a few key ones really uh, in, re in relation to operator experience. So looking back at 2022 R1, um, we made some changes around aligning the navigation in the web and the smart client. So I understand there may be users that use the smart client from a sort of control room position or perhaps the web client or the mobile client. So we, we've tried to align the navigation of that to um, to reflect. So it's, it's, it's familiarity if you're using 
either or um, software. Web client, as we know, is widely used by uh, many operators due to the ease, ease of use and being able to use it from any mobile phone or tablet via a native web browser. The smart client has many additional features over the mobile client, but we wanted to ensure the navigation in the web client mirrored the smart client. So if any user had experience of using the smart client, they would know where to find things in the web client. Also in 2022 R1, we added a new export tab, uh, which allows a nicer user experience when selecting multiple video sources for exporting. 2023 R2, uh, there was a renewal of the navigation panel in the web client to make it easier to select between live and playback. 2022 R3, uh, renewal of the global tools in the smart client to allow navigation and selection from additional sites. So some systems may have uh, multiple recording servers uh, dotted around, um, so it allowed you to quickly navigate through the, the tree a bit easier. Um, we also added a renewal of the navigation left pane in the web client in 2022 R3, um, again, to make it easier to sort of select and navigate to the cameras that are listed in the system. Going up to 2023 R1, um, we then introduced the merging of the live and playback tabs in the smart client. So you may have noticed now on the newer systems, um, you can quickly flick between live and playback. So it makes it easier to have live live viewing um, and then quickly switch to, to playback sort of seamlessly. Um, we then added a, a renewal of the timeline in the web client. So new date and time picker has been introduced to the web client timeline. Uh, it can be accessed in playback, expanded or collapse mode and in live only in collapsed timeline mode. The redesigned date and time picker uh, will for now only be accessible from the new timeline in views tab and provides a better user experience regardless of whether users prefer manually typing the date they would like to navigate to on the timeline or if they uh, prefer to use the calendar controls. 2023 R2, uh, renewal of the export tab in Smart Client. Um, we added some updates to this, uh, which now allows, allows making privacy masks uh, directly in the export tab instead of in the modal window as we did previously. We also, in 2023 R2, uh, there was a renewal of the timeline in the smart client to make it easier to identify uh, updated timeline control for better visibility and navigation. And smart client profile settings allows for the timeline control to auto hide when shown in smart wall views uh, or in normal views. So that's handy for video walls where the uh, icons were sort of present on there. Uh, finally, in 2023 R3, um, multiple views allowing you to have multiple tabs open with various live and playback scenarios. So this is the, the most recent feature to the operator experience, um, which again allows you to now have multiple tabs opened um, across the client, which um, again can make it easier for reviewing multiple footage. So. Uh, on to the next slide, uh, cybersecurity and compliance. Um, as you're aware, um, XProtect is secure by design. Um, it's currently compliant to FIPS 140.2, um, which allows Milestone to be used at high security locations and sites. We offer end-to-end -to -end encryption uh, using the latest encoding technologies from Microsoft and AAS 256-bit encryption. Milestone also um, has a, a what we call a, a responsible disclosure policy. So we take a line of security first when it comes to software development. We perform the strictest software and hardware security processes and testing and are IEC 29147 compliant. However, security vulnerabilities after a product release remain a possibility in this software environment. In such cases, transparency, communication and quick action are key. Our transparent disclosure policy is designed to resolve any vulnerability occurring in Milestone, develop capabilities, embedded technologies and execution environments where our products operate. 
It covers active threat monitoring, rapid assessment and threat prioritisation, response and proactive customer contact and expedited remediation. So on the on the slide here, you can see um, some of the uh, security features that are built in. Um, obviously, the web and the mobile clients are accessed here through the through the mobile server. Um, we also have uh, our event server for capturing all of the sort of log log information, user transactions, that kind of thing. Management server and recording servers, uh, and also out to the camera network and within the server network for client and management client. Um, so just on this, um, a couple of things that uh, we're aware of legislation and stuff and how it's going to affect things in the in the supply chain and, and operationally for everybody in the in the coming years. There's the future um, US ex executive order on cybersecurity is a is a standard that's um, sort of being evaluated at the moment. Also, the European Union Artificial Intelligence Act and NIS-2. These are some global uh, standards really for around cybersecurity that may, may be coming into, into play in the coming years. So again, some, some worthwhile reading there on some of those, uh, some of those standards. In addition, um, Expertech Corporate um, also has um, the GDPR Ready Certification Privacy Seal. Um, it's possible to configure your system to be GDPR compliant. Um, I believe we're the only VMS company that has this certification. For further information about how we can set the system up to comply with GDPR, um, we can offer the GDPR hardening guide, which is available on our website. And of course, you can speak to your um, our partner, Bedrock, who can advise on this as well. So uh, a little bit about the open platform. Um, Milestones X Protect open platform software integrates with software and hardware from trusted technology partners around the globe, meaning manufacturers building cameras, uh, access control products, video analytics, uh, software and much more. By partnering with these companies, Milestone is constantly adapting to evolving needs, empowering administrators with the limitless potential uh, of our op open platform innovations. Um, Milestone understands your need to leverage the existing security infrastructure um, police forces already use. For example, cameras, servers and network equipment may need to remain. Xprotect software easily integrates with many systems you might use in your existing security system. Uh, so not only does that mean Xprotect is quick to install, but it can also save you money. Uh, milestone licensing model is 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 quite simple. Uh, one device, one license, one cost. Um, for most Expertech products, you can add an unlimited number of recording servers, um, even at diverse remote locations. This can be managed from a, a centralized location using uh, interconnect or federated architecture. Milestone add-on provides a cost-effective way to gain central surveillance of multiple sites spread across a region. Um, and at, at Milestone, our experience tells us if um, you want your security platform to function seamlessly with your hardware. With Xprotect, you can maximise the capabilities of your current tools. Uh, the Milestone team continually tests security cameras and devices on the market for full integration compatibility. After testing in thousands of cameras, you can trust that Xprotect works as expected. Um, we have this with uh, our technology partner programme, so any Technology company that uh, integrates with Milestone can uh, self-certify their, their integrations and obviously keep them up to date. Um, some of the other changes around uh, around this is is with our VMS MIT VMS API that again has been evolved and adapted over the last couple of years. So we've we've got uh, the MIP SDK, uh, which is the Milestone integration platform software development kit um, it's unparalleled with the regard to the number of features and APIs. Uh, we currently have over 13 and a half thousand supported device drivers um, and around three and a half thousand technology partners. So looking at some of these um, ways of, of, of basically connecting things in. Um, 
it's a modern developer experience um, and by providing communication protocols developers use today they're enabled to either send data like video and events into Expertex or retrieve it from Expertex. So some of these uh, integrations can uh, offer benefits to, you know, potentially third party systems that, you know, the police are using already. So for example, webhooks, um, we can create events. So there could be sort of an event happening. Uh, we can use uh, webhooks to send uh, events to third party applications like Microsoft Teams, for example. Um, and we can quickly alert um, various teams that you're using different systems. And the whole piece around uh, Milestone really as this sort of open platform is that operationally that there's going to be lots of different systems that are in use um, across the forces, um, but it's how we can present a single pane of glass for potentially integrating all of these third party systems to make it much more efficient um, So um, obviously we'll, we can look through some questions at the end. Um, I'm going to hand over now to my colleague, Sean Mottram, who's going to talk to us a bit more detail about some of the features that have come in this year. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so as Ben said, I'm, I'm going to run, uh, run you through some of the new features. Um, we'll start off with a slide. Uh, that I've highlighted a few of the most relevant, or what I consider the most relevant and interesting uh, new features to tell you about. Um, so start off with three uh, smart client uh, features or updates. Uh, first being uh, multiple view tabs. Um, so these bring more flexibility and, and ease of use for operators. Um, we can the operator can open multiple tabs, um, allowing monitoring and reviewing of multiple scenes or views, uh, which can be quickly navigated. Um, so to, as an example, it might be that um, each day if the operator is different, they work on different cases or operations, um, and it doesn't always make sense to build a view that's committed to memory um, and takes up space um, in, in in terms of the the interface. Um, and daily basis and it, it might make more sense to, to sort of use these these um, multiple tabs that can be sort of thrown away once the, the operation or uh, that, that day is complete uh, and any, any number of these new tabs can be open so yeah like I say, um, I hopefully bring some flexibility and, and ease of use there um, next one in the smart client uh, we, we can now place output devices on the smart map um, which not only helps visualize the device's location so if, you, if you've got devices spread across the uk or your region um, it also allows control um, so to, to give an example again um, you might you might um, place an output device that's controlling a gate or barrier in london uh, we might actually be located in, in liverpool but you might have multiples of these uh, devices spread about um, but yeah, like i say helps visualize and um, enables you to control those devices from the smart map uh, next feature for the smart client uh, that I thought I'd point out is um, role, what, what we've called roles, uh, roles group groups on an alarm. Um, basically what this is, uh, alarms could be uh, assigned to a specific user by default. So at the moment alarms come through into an alarm stack um, and they're not necessarily assigned to anyone um, so as they originate. Um, so now um, you might be that high priority alarms fed through from public space or custody suites uh, are by default assigned to uh, the custody suite sergeant um, or the most appropriate person to deal with public space alarms. And it might be what we consider low priority alarms and again trying to make it real life or tangible for yourselves uh, something like a door left ajar might be fed through to maintenance staff or or someone similar that, that could deal with that alarm uh, and of course uh, as you can now these alarms can be reassigned um, if relevant to do so we haven't removed that feature um, a couple of updates for the web client so uh, bringing the web client in line with a smart client uh, we've made it easier for you to find the camera you're looking for um, so there's now a text entry field where the camera name name of a folder or a view name so a view that's been built previously uh, can be entered uh, to help you you find the, the relevant cameras that, uh, for, for, that you, you need to use for, for whatever you're working on at the moment uh, with them as with a smart client presented with a list of corresponding results uh, next one for the web client. So we've uh, launched a, a feature guide. Um, so the first time you access the web client uh, from uh, the, the latest release onwards, you'll be guided around the GUI or graphical user interface and its features uh, by the guide. Um, this is not only ideal for, for new users, um, um, but existing too, because any new features will be kind of pointed out and you'll be given a whistle stop tour um, of, of the web client. So yeah, quite a nice little feature that's been added there. 
Uh, then finally, uh, I'll put out a feature for the mobile client. Um, we, we can now visualize the camera uh, field of view um, in smart maps. So um, kind of bring it in line with the, the smart client there, the, the Windows based smart client that is um, in aiding operators to identify which camera offers the most suitable coverage um, when they're looking to review or view a particular area on a map. And then we see at the bottom there we've got device packs, uh, which we've got um, just a, a slide on. Uh, if you if you pop onto the next slide for me, Ben, um, just to highlight there that we're, we're approaching 14,000 devices um, supported um, um, within the VMS, um, and they're not only cameras there, um, as we spoke about just just a moment ago, output and input devices, audio horns, um, uh, uh, intercoms, and, and other IP um, endpoints. So yeah, uh, just thought I'd highlight that to you guys. So yeah, uh, one thing I'm going to show, I'll demo this shortly, is video restrictions, um, which is a tool or feature allowing a commander or other relevant senior operators to quickly revoke access to live and recorded video. Um, and it might be that we, we're working on a sensitive covert uh, operation um, or there's a serious RTI that's occurred uh, and we want to reduce the risk of leaks or to protect the privacy of the individuals involved. Um, and these uh, these restrictions can be placed um, live or in playback. So uh, as it shows there on the on the slide. So uh, th there is one more slide before I move on to the live demo, um, and that's just to just to uh, acknowledge when the, the next release will be. So we expect to release uh, 2024 R1 uh, on February 20th, uh, 24. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Right, so we, we've got a healthcare scene here um, and it might be that we're looking to, to protect the privacy of, what, of what's happened. So it might be that there's been um, a fall or a slip or something along those lines. Um, and the, the view could be comprised of multiple cameras. It doesn't have to just be a single one. Um, and we can see we've got this tool here called video restrictions. Uh, we can open that up and uh, we click create. Um, and what we'll see is that we, we can enter a, a headline and a description for the video restriction. So we'll pop something relevant in there if we, if we need to. Uh, and we see that the, the um, interval start is actually five minutes prior to me clicking create video restriction. Uh, and we felt this is relevant because typically something will unfold and it, it makes uh, quite a bit of sense to sort of uh, by default um, start it five minutes before the incident. You can of course change this. Um, and if there's a predefined operation or event um, that we want to restrict access to, we can also enter an, an interval end time. Um, and it might be that we've we've clicked video restrictions um, and started to create one with only one camera in the view, uh, but we, we actually want to add some more so we, we can open up this tool here and we can navigate through our views and cameras um, and add different devices in there that we want to restrict access. So we, it might be that we restrict access to body worn cameras as well that are streaming live into the VMS. So yeah, we can add those uh, if relevant there. So for the time being, we'll save this one. This, this camera name, is, as we can see, is actually called Video Restriction, um, and that, we'll, we'll just run with that one for, for now. We click Create. Um, it confirms that we, we're going to create a video restriction um, and points out that only operators assigned uh, restricted video permissions, which um, um, it, it can be assigned in the management client in the back end. So um, only commanders or senior staff perhaps might, might have these permissions. Um, only they uh, have access to the restricted footage and to actually control the video restrictions. Um, so we can create that. And we see we, we get a little padlock over the camera there. So that, that will continue now uh, for as long as that video restriction is in place and, until someone actively goes and removes it. So it might be in place for minutes, hours, days um, across all those cameras or one camera that we selected. Uh, we can always pop up here and we can view our restrictions. Uh, so we, we've got two on, on this particular system at the moment. So there was a slip and fall that was protected and the one that you saw me uh, create there. So once the operation or RTA or whatever it might have been that we restricted that video uh, or that footage uh, from uh, is con concluded, uh, we can click remove. Um, and quite a nice little uh, feature here is uh, we can create restriction for the recorded footage. So just because we're removing the restriction doesn't mean that the footage is playable by everyone immediately. Um, although we might determine that actually, yeah, the event's over um, and, and um, any potential for leaks. It's, it might have been a, an operation that's been released to, to the, the press already and that's what we were looking to, uh, to prevent. Um, so it doesn't really matter if anything's leaked. Um, so we, we, we can choose to, uh, to, to leave that in place or not at this point. So we click remove on the video restriction. And in a few seconds, we'll see that, that camera go back live. 
So yeah, that's a quick whistle stop tour of, uh, of video restrictions. Um, and uh, probably at this point, uh, we open up for, for Q and A. So um, uh, the one from Mike um, integrates easily. So uh, you said that XProtect integrates easily with other systems. So uh, not necessarily other VMS, but there is one mention there. Uh, so uh, I'll touch on a Vigilon. We, we can we can uh, we pull the Vigilon cameras in. We've got bespoke drivers written for Vigilon cameras uh, and Dalmire as well with their their really high res uh, and quite nice cameras. Uh, we, we we can pull those into yeah. our system as well. Um, we can street, we can pull Onviv video in and we can push Onviv video out as well. We, we've got um, we, we've got tools in place uh, to achieve that. So uh, feel free to reach out for, for more information on that one. There's one uh, again from Mike, probably relevant for Ben to pick up uh, around licensing. Uh, yeah, so can you hear me OK? Hope so. Yeah. Um, oh, good. You mentioned that the license model is one license per end device. Um, OK, so system all at the same time. Yeah, so obviously, as Sean mentioned, we've got a couple of uh, mechanisms of sharing video feed to third parties. So within Xprotect, we've got what we call the Onvif bridge. So that allows us to have any camera that's currently on Xprotect. If we want to share that to uh, another third party, uh, we can configure the Onvif bridge to do that. <clears throat> uh, in terms of, we also have uh, interconnects as well uh, around there. But if um, if we have, um, let's just read the question again. I might have 500 feeds, but any one time I might view a maximum of 50 feeds. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, if you've got 500 cameras, um, if you want to um, feed video uh, or share video from Milestone, there's a number of ways of doing that. Um, there's stuff with interconnect and there's also the the onvif bridge but licensing it effectively would be um it wouldn't necessarily be a full video license it might just be an interconnect license for example um but the, again there's ways of manually configuring those or, or assigning them differently but it's probably better to understand a bit more about your requirement on that specific requirement mike um, and perhaps then we can uh, address that and, and look at look at some options for you Perfect. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ben. That might be all of the questions that we've got for today. Um, and we're just running out of time as well. So uh, I'll just close this out here. Thank you again both for your time. Um, Thanks for having us. Welcome. Now, uh, for any of the viewers, if you have any other questions that come to you later on, please feel free to get in touch and we'll be happy to have a chat with you. It can be ourselves or Ben or Sean, we can put each other in touch with everyone. Um, our next law enforcement webinar that you might be interested in will be next month. So on Thursday, the 14th of December, uh, we will be covering Bedrock Seek and how video analytics can support your work. So please register on our website. My colleague Cara will be sharing a link in the chat just now for you, uh, where you can find out more. Thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. Goodbye, Thanks everyone. Thanks again, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.